just don't touch anything if you don't have to. That's pretty much the rule I live by. Hi, my name is Jordan. This is a day in the life of a civil engineer. I've got a camera crew with me. Come and learn about what I do. But first, gotta get a run in with a couple of my friends. Let's go. Run's done. Time to get ready for work. All right, so first up today is we're gonna have our civil team meeting. Then I'm gonna have a meeting with my boss. We're gonna talk about a new upcoming project. And then this afternoon, we're gonna go out to a job site and talk to one of our consultants about a job we're currently working on. The best thing about being a civil engineer is the finished product. Yeah, so it's really gratifying when I can come up with a really great engineering solution. I work for the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, or we call it SMUD. What I do is I create the structures and foundations that we put all the electrical equipment on. And I also do the grading design and site drainage to make sure our substations don't fill up with water. In civil engineering, there's a lot of specialties you can get into. Structural engineering, land development, hydrology, municipal water services. You got geotechnical, there's transportation, roads, bridges, all the infrastructure we use to get from A to B. There's also environmental, basically minimizing our impact on the environment. Okay, it's 9.58, I'm getting ready to go into my staff meeting. I'm gonna be presenting on a training seminar I went to recently where I learned about uh, the electrical side of substation design. As a civil engineer in electrical utility, I work with electrical engineers a lot and I need to know what they're dealing with so I can better understand how to help them achieve their goals. One of the most fun exercises we did was substation layout. So that's where you start looking at the clearances. How close can I get these things together and still provide enough room for uh, people to operate around them and not create any potential hazards. To become a civil engineer, I attended a four-year university. I graduated with my bachelor in science in civil engineering. I was lucky enough to get hired on by a consultant and I was able to sit for my California PE exam. After that, I worked for the consultant for another five years and I found this job at SMUD because it's, it's a lot closer to where I grew up. It really helps to be good at math, but you don't have to be a whiz at math. You do have to get through a lot of uh, math courses in college, uh, calculus, statistics, some higher level math. By the time you're applying your trade, it's a lot of algebra. If you're pretty strong in algebra, you can definitely be a civil engineer. So you do have to be good at math. Yeah. <laughs> relative, I guess. <laughs> hey, Patrick. How's it going? Hey, Jordan. As you probably know, yesterday I met with the substation design group and they want to put a substation in the pocket park. The problem is we got to get the 115,000 volts from this point along G Street up and over to this. Well, these are all, these are all going to be on piles. So, I mean, another thing we could do is we could just make this one big cap and put the piles where we need them. There's a variety of skills that you want to work on if you want to be a civil engineer. Uh, being a team player, analytical, detail-oriented, uh, enjoy problem solving, spatial planning, uh, figuring out how to get things to fit in uh, places they normally wouldn't. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Jordan, nice to see you. Yep, you too. Good. Eric, hey, Jordan. nice to meet you. Good to see you. Yep, you too. So we're going to talk about some septic issues and maybe a little well talk too. So yeah, right. let's go ahead. Yeah, that's why let's go. We could probably just plate that trench Yeah. yeah. and yeah, just... not even worry about putting a driveway in. Yes. Okay. Like a lot of careers, there are deadlines and there's pressure to meet those deadlines and to come up and to hit budgets too. So. We're always cognizant of that. The pressure can build when you're under the gun and over budget and just trying to finish the project. As long as you have a good team and everybody's working toward the same, same goal, very seldom a problem, but it can happen. So if you want to become a civil engineer, you're going to want to go to a four-year university and get your bachelor in science in civil engineering. And then you're going to want to find a consulting firm or some organization that will allow you to practice as a civil engineer for two to four years, depending on your state. At that time, you get to sit for your professional engineer exam. And this is, this is really important. I can't stress this enough. It's the whole reason why you go to school to become a civil engineer. A PE stamp gets you work. So after all that, depending on which state you're in, you can be a civil engineer, a licensed civil engineer, anywhere between six and eight years. 
So the average starting salary for a civil engineer, it's region specific. I think it's roughly 90,000 as, as a kind of a comparable starting salary in today's market. If you like problem solving, if you like working as part of a team, if you like the idea of working on massive infrastructure projects that provide a needed benefit to the communities you work in, you like good pay, you like reasonable hours, civil engineering might be for you, and I think you can do it. So that's the end of my day. Got to uh, chat with the team, go over a couple projects, no big issues, a um, couple things to work out, but you know, all in all, it's a pretty easy day. Got to go out to the site, but we'll just uh, go home and do it all again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time. All right, Jordan, let's go ahead and talk Jordan, about get your foot in my office now! <laughs> <laughs>